Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about Facebook Marketplace. This has become our favorite way to buy and sell items, especially in the past year. We'll share tips and tricks to help you sell your stuff and snag those great deals. Let's get started. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Marie. It is just us today. Mindy is not available. I know. We'll miss her. Yes, but we are joined by a guest. And listeners, today we're talking about refreshing our homes on a budget. And I love this topic. I never get tired of ideas in this area. How about you, Julie? Yes, it's always good to know tips and tricks, especially with Facebook Marketplace, which is what we're going to be talking about. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited about this topic. Yes. One of the hardest things about this past year was that you really couldn't shop in many stores. Either they weren't open or the inventory was down. And I remember I was so thrilled when Home Goods finally opened back up last May here in Tennessee. And then when I went in, all they had was the stuff from March, like yeah. their Easter stuff and still winter stuff. And I was like, oh, this is not the same experience at all. No, it was so disappointing. <laughs> yes. So it's been a bit of a struggle, but 2021 is a new year with a fresh start. And we want our homes to reflect that. Today, we're joined by our friend Cheryl Alt, who is also a faithful listener. And she has redecorated and refreshed a lot of her home using just Facebook Marketplace. Cheryl, welcome to Midlife Matters. Thanks so much for having me. We're so excited and I'm so excited to hear about your tips and tricks for Facebook Marketplace because I know there is a lot behind the scenes and I know that you've learned a lot this year working with it. Yeah, and I've watched Cheryl transform her house over the last probably 15 to 20 years. Our boys were friends when they were little, so I've watched her upstairs edition, her kitchen remodeled her living room remodel, and then her sunroom, and it all looks so great. So I'm really excited to hear what you're up to now and how you're going about it. Yes. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cheryl, why don't you give listeners just a little bit about yourself before we get started? You are in the midlife years. Yes, I am. So I'm a wife and a mother of three children, two boys and a girl. Both my boys are, are married, and my girl is finishing her last semester of college. Um, I work part-time at our local YMCA and was an accountant actually in my former life uh, before oh, children. Wow. Okay. But I love to read, journal. I like to sing in the church choir and shop on Facebook Marketplace. Yes. <laughs> and Cheryl, longtime listeners may remember your voice from way back in our Silver Linings of the Pandemic episode last spring. <laughs> Yeah. And you left us a voicemail saying that one of your silver linings was using the extra time at home to redo your master bedroom using only items you found on Facebook Marketplace. And I think that once you finished your bedroom, you were hooked. So why don't you tell us how you got started <laughs> using Facebook Marketplace? Well, so I've always loved to shop at like thrift stores, yard sales, like Goodwill, so shopping on Facebook Marketplace just made a lot of sense, um, but I feel like Marketplace usually actually has a little bit better quality items as a whole than like your yard sales and things. I feel like people want to try and make more money on Marketplace, so they'll put it on there, and it's usually mm -hmm. better quality too. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. So were you already using Facebook quite a bit before COVID, or did that really get you going? Well, I was buying and selling both on Facebook Marketplace before COVID, but, you know, we were all stuck at home and had a lot of time on our hands, so I kind of got a little more addicted to it, <laughs> and um, so definitely started using it more after COVID hit. But anyway, yeah, I was on there a lot. I shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> it is addicting. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay, so Cheryl, what motivated you to look solely to Facebook Marketplace when redecorating your rooms? Well, like I said earlier, I feel like the overall quality on Marketplace was better than like thrift stores. And of course, with it being COVID, you can't, couldn't really get out and, and do all that. So mm -hmm. that was just the easy, easy fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, tell us what have you redone this past year? So Marie mentioned earlier, the first room I did was my bedroom and I was going to take 
my, you know, my current bedroom and just kind of paint some things in it and then just, you know, leave them like they are. Mm -hmm. But I found, um, I found some night nightstands and lamps for my bedroom. And so I was super excited about that. I also redid um, my dining room. That was my biggest project. I literally took everything out of there and replaced it with everything that I found on um, Marketplace, including like plates on the wall. And then I have a, a corner in my, my office outside of our bedroom upstairs that I have a little corner that I have a little prayer chair in. That was very dated. So I got motivated and got on Facebook to try and find some items for there as well. So those are the three main areas that I've done. Okay. I'm just curious. Have you ever had any luck finding curtains or window treatments? I've seen some on there, but I've always been hesitant about it. Um, I've gotten burned a few times on Facebook Marketplace because I'm the type of person that if I see I want to get it, I'll go get it. Um, but I have, I have, you know, I've gotten burned on there before. So. Mm. Um, because I feel like, I feel like I have to, once I tell them I'm going to come get it, I don't, I want to be that person that does come get it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I know I always feel like it's fair to look something over and not take it if it's not it what is, you and I have done that. Be. Yeah, I've definitely done that before. I've gone and it's been on the porch and then I've, I've refused it and I got in the car and told him, I'm sorry, that's not really what I was expecting. So, you know, I sort of feel bad, but then again, you know, it, it, we can take it back to the store. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Well, what is the best bargain you found this year, Cheryl? Because that's, I think, what we all want when we get on Facebook Marketplace. We want to get something wonderful for cheap. Well, the best bargain by far was my dining room chairs that I found. And I found six Windsor dining room chairs for $90. So oh. that was just amazing. Now, I did put a little work into them. They were in very sturdy, very great condition. But I ended up painting them, you know, black. They were like a light pine color, and I painted them black. And um, I just love them. Love them. That was by far my best find. Yeah, oh, that's a great price. Yeah. And really, my table that I got for that same room was only 150 too. And it's a huge table. It seats 10. So it's mm. super nice. Mm -hmm. Did you find that when you were looking for things, they would require a bit of work, painting and things like that? Well, I felt like I had a better shot if something needed work. Um, and I wasn't scared to, you know, update it. So, you know, that definitely helps if you're looking for things. Of course, you know, towards the end, after I'd done so many projects, I was looking for things more that were already done. <laughs> right. So I wouldn't have to put as much work into them. So, yeah, with Windsor chairs, that would be a lot of work with all of those All those spindles. spindles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I did it. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see that. Well, what's been your most exciting find? Well, actually, my nightstands upstairs, the very first uh, project I did in our bedroom, um, I found one nightstand. And then I thought, you know, I could be eclectic and just have the other one the same as it was. But then the following, I was just looking. And because, you know, once you once you put up in your space bar what you're searching for, for several weeks or days, at least it does for me, it kind of pops up new ones that are the same. And so I found a nightstand that almost matched the one that I had found identical. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't believe it. Like you normally buy them either two together, mm -hmm. but I had bought one and then I bought one. So to me, that was my most exciting find is that second nightstand that looked similar. It, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar to the oh, one wow. I had already bought. And did those require work, Cheryl? No, they actually were already painted kind of oh, a shabby white color. Uh -huh. And the lamps that I found for my bedroom were also um very inexpensive and a, and a good deal. I, those would probably be a good deal too. They're really, they're really pretty wood lamps with burlap shades, both of them for $30. <laughs> oh, that's great. Did those match? Yes. Now those matched. Yeah. And you bought them together. Okay. And bought them together. Yeah. Yeah. But my nightstands were fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's always nice when you're surprised. By yes. Something. <laughs> yes. Well, Cheryl, how long do you generally spend looking for an item? Well, um, if I really want something, I'll look for several weeks, mm -hmm. believe it or not, because Facebook is always watching for me. If I've typed it into the search bar, like I said earlier, a lot of times it'll immediately pop up. So apparently I was looking for a car at some point because now I get car ads <laughs> at the very top of my marketplace for whatever reason. It's really weird. 
but yeah, I, um, I, I, I'll search for several weeks for something if I really, really want it. Yeah. At the point that I give up on it, that's when I find it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know until really recently, I've mostly enjoyed Facebook marketplace for selling things, but kind of in prep for this episode, I went looking to buy and I really hit the jackpot this week over about a two day period. I found a bedside table that was made out of bamboo and a bamboo bar cart that I wanted to use on my right. back porch, like to serve yes, food on. Yes. And then a bamboo armchair. And I'm not talking about the boho rattan, but this is more like Chippendale, things that mix well with my colonial right. furnishings. Kind of has an Asian flair. Yes. And I was so excited. And you're right. I had no idea that normally I just scroll through and look through things and I just don't ever like anything that I see. But when I put in bamboo, it kept bringing things up. And now the way the algorithm works, it looks like only bamboo stuff is being sold on <laughs> Facebook marketplace, right, you know? Right, right, so right. that was such a cool thing to discover. Mm-hmm. That is really neat. That is one of the tips that um, I have learned that you need to keep searching, keep typing, and even click on things that are in that category that you want, and Facebook will continue to show you more. Yeah, I had never really clicked. I had just looked and I kept getting, you know, clothes. I will never buy clothes off there, you know. <laughs> so now I don't even see them anymore. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, how often do you check Facebook Marketplace a day when you're looking for an item, Cheryl? Well, let's see. If you ask my family, <laughs> they would say I check it all the time. <laughs> But um, I'm actually looking for something. I usually check it. If I'm actively looking for something, I'll usually check it one to two times a day. Um, back before COVID, that was about what it was. And then when COVID hit, it was probably three or four times a day, depending on what <laughs> I was looking for. But like, well, at one point, my daughter was like, Mom, put your phone down. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm looking for something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say that when I'm looking for something, I might check it. 15 or 20 times a day, like, because yeah. they're new things. And a lot of times, you know, if you don't get it in like the first 30 minutes, something was listed. If it's good, it's probably already has 10 messages ahead of you or more. Right, right. right. And I mean, you know, it just you just have to you just have to look if you really, really want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to ask you, Cheryl, is how do we get those popular, hard, sought after items? Do you have any tips for that? Well, of course, we talked about earlier, you know, you search for and you actually click on it. Um, but checking often, that's, you know, we talked about that as well. Um, and I have, I've actually um, gotten to the point too, where if I really, really want it, and like you said, Marie, earlier, if you're way down the list, mm -hmm. um, or even two or three on the list, I'll send a message to the person and I'll say, please let me know if, if the other two people in front of me fall through, um, because I'm really interested in this item. Mm. And sometimes that's worked out for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they, they genuinely probably <laughs> fell through. I don't think she skipped over those two people, but mm -hmm. that's yeah. on her if she did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, that's just keep checking, just keep well, checking. Do you generally just use the standard, is this still available, or do you type a personal message every time? I type a personal message every time. I actually okay. delete that message out. I like backspace, and I delete it out and, and type in a message saying, you know, because a lot of times now I'll ask for, like, measurements or um, what condition is it in. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, those are those are always good things to know that the person, you know, you've typed in a personal message almost. Just to show a little more Just to show interest. a little more interest. Yeah. yeah. If you know that there are a lot of other people that have already messaged, have you ever offered to go higher than the asking price? No, I have not offered to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That would be that? an option that somebody could do. Like Oh yeah. They could. If you feel like they it's already could. priced pretty well, but you just want to move to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever done that, Julie? I have not. Yeah. I've had other people offer me more on an item. I haven't done it, but... You really? Know. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, if you had already sold it, though, I don't understand the whole rules of, you know, like, the. it makes me a little stressed when I'm selling mm. to keep up with who's first. It does, if you have then, a lot of people. Yeah. And some people were first, but they're never, they never show up or, you know, I don't know right. really how to go through that fairly. So it's usually just first come, first serve. Is that what you guys do? 
Well, just I like try whoever to give, comes. Yeah, right. Well, and I try to give the person that said they were interested first at least 12 hours, like, I, and it, depending on if I need it out of the house. But most of the time I try to give them a little, okay. you know, you a little are time. You too nice. Time. You guys are too nice. Yeah. I feel like if they message me, if this is available and I get back to them within, you know, cause usually I'm checking then within that first oh, yeah. hour. Cause hopefully it's going to sell quickly. And if I message them back and they don't message me back in, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, I move on if I have other people, because I already can tell that they're probably going to be paying to work with if they're not, <laughs> if they're yeah, not responding. That's true. If they're not responding. I know on my last purchase, I had to go to Madison, Tennessee. And if you live here in Nashville, you know, that is not an easy drive to get my, um, to get my cart. Well, and I had already been in a conversation with another girl about the chair and she never, I didn't get any response for a full 24 hours. Mm. So the next day she responds and says, yes, it's still available. Well, guess where she lived? Madison, Tennessee. So I drove to Madison twice in a week. Oh no! Oh my goodness! You know, and had she responded, I would have picked it up the same day. Thank so God. it right. is. Um, I try if I'm selling, I do try to be more responsive. You know, yeah. So people don't have to wait. Well, yeah. and I, I think that if you're trying to buy and it's something you really want, you better be responsive, or you might lose out. Because honestly, if I'm waiting for you to respond and someone else messages me and says, "Hey, I can be there in 30 minutes," I'm selling it. I'm selling it to whoever can come and give me the money first because so many times people act like they're interested and then they never show up or they don't actually set up a time to come and get it. And I do think that in general, the rule is go with the order that people messaged you. But if somebody is able to get there, then go with that. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, My daughter and daughter-in-law saw a lot on Facebook Marketplace and I have asked them before, should I wait? Or And they're like, no way. You go with whoever can get there. So I definitely think the younger crowd is not stressing about this. They're just no, selling they're to the first person to show up at their door. <laughs> and some people will list it that way. They'll mm-hmm. say first come, first serve. Mm-hmm. So it does kind of create a sense of urgency on that posting if they've got that on there. If I see that on there, I thought, oh, I'm done. I wouldn't be able to get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but what about this? Um, and this is something um, I actually did with one of my items. Do you ever pay for it by Venmo and to hold it and then pick it up maybe without even having seen it? Have you ever done that? Yes, I have, actually. And were you happy with the item, Cheryl? Yes, I was happy with it because the pictures were good enough that I could see it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, I sometimes scope the people out that I'm buying it from. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I could tell, yeah, I can tell, you know, hey, this is going to be an okay experience. And so, um, you know, I trust them. So, right. But I've also, I've also bought something from someone and um, I, I had already been mowed. So I was committed, got it home and didn't really like it. Um, I, it was okay when I picked it up, thought, oh, this is going to work. Then when I got it home and didn't like it, I resold it on Facebook and it usually resells. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the last thing I sold, I took a Venmo payment and then she picked it up maybe two days later. And I love that arrangement because I didn't care mm-hmm. when she came, you know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just sold two chairs on Monday night and then the person just finally came and picked them up this morning, but she had already paid me. So I felt fine about her taking her time. And this is just kind Mm -hmm. of a side note, but one of my chairs had kind of a loose back. And some people might have said, well, I'm not even going to bother trying to sell that. But I thought, well, I'll sell it. And then I will just put that in the little description. So when she came to pick up the two chairs, um, when she picked up the one with the loose back, I said, yeah, this is the one with the loose back. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. And she goes, oh, I know. She goes, but I don't care. I can't remember the last time we sat in our chairs. I only want them to look cute. So don't dismiss your items. If you don't feel like they're in perfect shape, that doesn't matter because someone else might not care. As long as you're letting them know, you don't know what they want to use it for. That's right. That's true. Yeah. (laughs) I know on on the last pieces that I bought, I offered less than the listing price for one of them. And the other two, I just paid full price. What do you do, Cheryl? Do you usually start with less than the listing price? Or do you just, if you like it, do you just go for it with the asking price? I go for it with the asking price if I really like it. But I have found myself lately asking less for stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like I'll go and say, will you take, 
Like if it's 50, will you take 40 or, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on what it is. So, and some people, they'll come back. All they can say is no, you know, right. I want my listing. So, well, that bar cart that I found, you can't find them under $400 new. And I wasn't going to pay that. So this one I saw was $125. And when I messaged her, she said, I've had so many no-shows on this item. So if you'll come get it, you can have it for 100 And then when I got there, there were a few little scratches and just imperfections. And I said, would you take 80 And she said, sure. Oh, my goodness, so, Julie. Awesome. <laughs> it went Good from 125 you. to 80 so That's I was really, really proud of that one. Yeah. 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 See, I don't know that I could do that face to face. It's easy to do it online. It wasn't face to face. She never came oh. out. We were, even though I was in On her driveway, phone? she never saw me. She just, we talked over the messaging. I guess oh, because of funny. COVID, she didn't want to come yeah, to the door. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. My daughter-in-law, she said in one of her tips that if you <laughs> want to offer less, try to offer it in the beginning of your negotiations, like while you're still messaging back and forth. Don't do it when you actually go to pick up the item. I mean, unless there is an imperfection or something that didn't show up in the pictures, but just going there with the intention of saying, oh, well, I'll, I'll get him to come down when I actually see him face to face. It's not really the way Facebook Marketplace is. Unless you're going to say, I'm coming to look at this. True. You well, know, that's true. not, not you like could. I am coming to buy this, but I want to come look at it. Yeah. And I've had people do that, especially when I sold my dining room table. I had a, a one person come look at it and they say, well, I, I just don't really know. And then the next person that came that got it mm-hmm. really wanted it. So, but they, you know, asked to look first. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. If you see that the item has been up for a while, you can tell if it's been listed a week or so, mm-hmm. then I offer less. If it's been up a while, you know, if it's only been up 15 minutes, they're probably not going to take less. But if you see that it's been up several days, then you have a little more bargaining room. Yeah. I advertised a chair for my mom and it had been up about 10 minutes and somebody said, are you firm on the price? And I said, well, right now, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you end up selling it for the price you asked for? It hasn't sold yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Cheryl, do you only shop local or do you ever have things shipped from well, out of I, state? It's funny. I just saw, no, I always go to pick up um, wherever that is. And I've actually, I, best I can recall, I don't think I've ever even met anybody anywhere. I think I've gone and it's always been porch pickup. But um, I just noticed that the other day about, now, some of the things that I'm looking at do have like local delivery. Like I looked at a bag the other day and they were willing to ship it to me for like three fifty, and I'm oh, like, oh, wow. but it's I'll, local. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was a Nashville person. It was just oh. like a little, like a antique kind of gym bag, a UT gym bag. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. But I wouldn't want to go all the way down to Nashville just to pick that up. And <laughs> mm-hmm. it said, you know, it would ship it for three fifty or something like that. And I was like, you know, that might actually be kind of cool. I might could do that on some stuff. But like I said, I've gotten burned so much in the past with clothing and shoes and, you know, so I don't do, I don't do that anymore. It's mainly furniture and mm-hmm. miscellaneous household stuff that I buy. Right. Do you want to share one of your burn stories? Yeah, we we want to know how we can avoid <laughs> getting burned. <laughs> well, I, uh, gosh, hang on just a second. Let me think a minute, girls. <laughs> okay. What was it I've got burned on? I was trying to remember the other night what it was. I do have a funny story about a, I didn't feel comfortable and I should have walked away before when I got to the area where I was picking up. Oh. <laughs> I do have a funny story on that. What do you do to stay safe, Cheryl? Like, what are some of the parameters that you've set up? The main thing I do is if if I have a gut feeling that it's not going to be a good thing, I just message back and say, I'm, I'll pass. Okay, I'll pass. Because it used to be I would feel bad about passing, but mm-hmm. I've gotten so much better at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I don't, I don't feel like I'm hurting anybody's feelings and it's not like they're going to come like after me and write me a note <laughs> saying, Hey, I can't believe you didn't take my item and blah, blah, blah. So, right. um, I always check out the Facebook profile and so yeah. many times we'll have a friend in common. And then I always feel like, Oh, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're good. I know. <laughs> yeah. One thing, another thing that I found using Facebook marketplace, and this doesn't happen, um, with everything, but I notice in particular it happens with cars and furniture you can actually click on the person that's selling and you can see how many things they sell on Facebook Marketplace. So say you're looking for a car and you see they sell a car a week. Well, then it's maybe not what you're looking for because maybe you're looking for a family-owned vehicle 
or mm-hmm. even just like they're selling furniture and you notice they're selling a couch a week. Well, it's pr- might not be the story that's really like that you're thinking about in the ad. So I mm-hmm. think just checking out the profiles, seeing how often they sell things, seeing if you have any mutual friends, going to an area that you feel comfortable, even if it's just a mutual location, like a parking lot. There are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself feel more comfortable. Right. Yeah, I would feel less comfortable going to an apartment building where I had to maybe go upstairs or inside a door or Mm -hmm. I really just like being outside and not really having to see the people at all. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I like porch pickups. (laughs) Right, right. Um, This is kind of a funny thing, but um, I was selling something the week that everything shut down in Tennessee and this woman said she wanted it. And I said, okay, when do you want to come? And she said, well, we're under stay-at-home orders, so can you hold it till after that? And I thought, no way. First of all, I would never hold something two weeks. And imagine if I had, I'd still be holding on to it like eight or nine months later. (laughs) Yeah, for real. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like to hold things for people unless they have Venmoed me ahead of time. Right. Yeah, Yeah. and I don't remember before COVID doing a lot of the porch pickup. I know that was around, but everything I sold, usually the person came into my front door and it was sitting there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like, that has been a good thing that's come out of COVID. (laughs) I I think before COVID, I I still did the porch pickups. I didn't, I didn't like interacting. (laughs) Uh huh. Well, but you still had to do, I never carried cash. So I love the Venmo thing now. So you really have no interaction at all. I love that. Yeah, that's true. And now speaking to listeners who might be thinking, well, I don't have Venmo and I'm reluctant to get that. Julie, I remember when you were reluctant to get Venmo. Can you give listeners some reassurance? Yeah, I'm probably the last person on the planet to get it, but oh, I love it now. So um, I don't know why we were so hesitant. Just, I don't know, just I'm I'm always afraid of scammers and <laughs> uh-huh. things like that. So, but I love it. And it's been a great way to make purchases like that with people you don't really know. And that's what the younger generation is using. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how my kids pay me back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we get their contribution to the phone bill every month on Venmo. <laughs> That's right. right. (laughs) Okay. Right. So Cheryl, if someone is going on Facebook Marketplace and, you know, they've done it a little bit, but they're not really familiar with the different parameters you can set up, what are some of the things that they can choose? Well, a lot's changed, but what I did when I first set it up, um, so I'm sure there's some more things you can click to to narrow your search down. But like for one thing I did, I'm, I'm mainly set it up for anything within me, a 30 mile radius. So like I didn't want to travel past 30 miles to pick something up. So that's one of the parameters I set up. I don't know of any others right now that I've set up. I must have mine set at 50 or 60 miles. Then, you must. I think, because, I think Madison I think, is further. Yes, it is. Because I think um, that's what it initially sets up everybody's as is around 50 miles. Oh. And so that's, I backed mine down to about 30 just that's so I good. wouldn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, another thing that you can choose, and they make you choose this every single time, but it does weed it down, is you can choose local pickup only. So it won't show you everything that people are offering to ship if you don't want to get into that. That's a little frustrating that you have Mm -hmm. to do it every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't found a way that you can just set it one time and be done. But listeners, if you know of a way, please do message us because I would love to be able to do that. (laughs) That's new in the last like month or so, right? I mean, Facebook Marketplace keeps updating like they do continuously. Yeah. Right, right. And something that I've done too, Cheryl, and you, I know that you've done it, is when I'm visiting another area or my husband travels for work and if he happened to drive to St. Louis, I have put in the St. Louis zip code to see, oh, do they have what I'm looking for? And maybe he could pick it up and bring it home. So you don't oh, have to keep your Facebook on just your own zip code. You can change it. Yeah, well, I've done that yeah. for Florida. Down mm-hmm. down when we go to Florida, I'll I'll look on that, and it'll yeah. automatically. Sometimes my phone changes it for me. It's oh, kind of okay. scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it'll change to where I'm at uh, locally. Um, like when I come home, I immediately start getting all the the stuff in my area. But when I'm down there, it'll just show me what's down there. Mm. Interesting. So That's neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a friend who lived in Little Rock. And she was always searching the Nashville area because she had some family here. She had me here and she'd call me, you know, a few times and say, hey, do you have time to go look at this? Or if I buy this, could you pick it up? And 
So that is a good idea if you have means to pick things up in other cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, some of the tips that my daughter-in-law shared with me, I wanted to share with listeners. And you guys, um, Julie and Cheryl, tell me if you've done this. One thing that she said is that if your post has been up for more than a week, you can renew the listing so that it's back at the top of people's lists, which I thought that the only way to do that was to reduce your price. But there must be a spot on there where you can renew. Yes, there is. I've done that recently because I'm still trying to sell my dining room chairs, but I'm trying to get the price that I would get at a furniture store. So apparently no (laughs) one's going to buy them. (laughs) I'm not willing to give them away just yet. I was just kind of testing the waters. But yeah, I've renewed them several times. (laughs) Okay. Okay. She also said that there is a comment section, which I never could find. But she said there people put a lot of helpful information in there, like location, dimensions. I know that if you do scroll down, a lot of times there is more information, but not always. Well, one thing I noticed, I was trying to sell this chair for my mom. And a friend, a personal friend of mine messaged me and said, oh, is this a recliner? And I said, no, it's just a chair. And so she said, okay, I'm going to hold off. We were really looking for a recliner. Well, then I did drop the price a week later. Mm -hmm. And she messaged me back personally again and said, oh, Julie, we're still looking for a recliner. I don't want that chair. And I thought, why is she, why is she do, why is she sending me this message? Oh, no. So apparently when it, the price dropped, it sends everybody that was interested. It does. The price drop. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Cause I've, I've bid on, or I've, I've said interested on something or I've looked at it. No, you just have to look at it. I think yeah, I don't even think you have to comment on it. on it. Yeah. I don't think you even have to comment on it. I think you have to send I think you have to send a message. Like, are you? Um, oh, send is this a available? physical message. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. Well, yeah. I just apologize. I said, oh, I'm not trying to harass you. That was an automatic thing. <laughs> so just beware of that. If, uh, well, and another if thing, if you're looking at something and you've messaged about it and it sells and the person marks sold, then it will send you a message that that item sold. Which yes. is very nice because I hate is very nice. continuing to get messages about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now she said, keep looking and often by the end of a week, by checking daily, the item you'll look for will pop up. And Cheryl, you said that you've worked, you've looked several weeks for things mm-hmm. before, but in mm-hmm. general, do you find that, you know, within five to seven days, you found something similar to what you were looking for? Oh yeah, for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. She said that if you want something and you fear it'll go quickly, offer to Venmo half the money, even if you don't want to Venmo the whole thing, just so they know that Mm. you're serious and you aren't going to ghost them. Yeah. Um, Don't come down too quickly on your price. Like you said, Julie, if it's only been up 10 minutes and they said, how firm are you? Be firm. (laughs) Yeah. And I've found that if I get a lot of messages asking me to come down, that's kind of an indication that I might have priced it too high. On the other hand, if I sell it in five minutes, that means I probably priced it too low. It's hard to I get know. right in the middle. It is so hard. It is so hard to price You want to get right. rid of it, but then you think, oh, I probably could have gotten more. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I'm guessing my dining room chairs are very overpriced. I haven't gotten <laughs> one question. <laughs> Well, and I do think just in general, you know, I think I see things listed for like a couple thousand or even more on Facebook Marketplace. I just don't know if that's the place. I don't know if that's the forum that people are going to drop that much money. Like, I don't want to drop a lot of money on Marketplace because I know I can't return it. It may or may not even be the way it was advertised. Like the whole appeal of it is that I am not spending a lot of money. What do you guys feel about that? Right, right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I just needed a different suggestion of where to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Consignment, well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you're not necessarily looking for, you know, high, high, high quality, mm-hmm. but you're just looking for a change. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bought some uh, chairs this week, and this woman, she met me in a parking lot. She showed up with four chairs and four kids in her minivan. And I said, Now, why are you getting rid of these chairs? She said, Facebook Marketplace, I'm just always changing around. So I do think that that is the attitude of Facebook Marketplace. I'll buy this today. I might sell it in a few months, but I'm going to enjoy it while I have it. And it gives me a change. Right. And for that price, you're getting your money's worth out of the year you keep it or two, you know, however long you keep it. Mm -hmm. Uh, My daughter-in-law suggested that you research your pricing. You know, if you want to sell six chairs, Cheryl, type Mm -hmm. in Windsor chairs and see what the going rate is. Your person obviously didn't do that if she sold six Mm -hmm. for 90. Yeah, she did not. 
she, I got a steal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can just kind of Google or not Google, but look in Facebook Marketplace. What's the going rate for this kind of thing? And that'll help you price. Again, with the curating, you really need to work with it a little bit to be able to see the items that you want to get those clothing ads off, Julie, and get that rattan (laughs) furniture on. (laughs) Yeah. One other tip that I have for selling, and I've I've read about this too, is to take good pictures Mm. that a lot of people just, if there's only one picture, they're not going to bother. They want to see the side, the back. Mm Mm-hmm the stain on the cushion or the scratch on the leg. Like it's better to just put that all out there up front, I think. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are going to ask for those anyway. So it's just better if you have more than one picture. Right. And something I learned this last time was um, I was selling something for my mom and I didn't put the measurements on there. So every single person asked, what are the dimensions? (laughs) And I had to Mm. retype that every time. So the more information you can put up front, I guess the less the less questions you'll get. Right. And some uh, sites want you to put like if you've put it on another site, like cross posted, mm-hmm. like they'll want you to put because like I used to just sell on like Brentwood by sell and trade and buy and sell. And then I got into Facebook Marketplace and they, you know, Brentwood especially wants you to make sure that you say you're cross posting it, meaning you're putting it on other sites okay, um, in the area, including Facebook Marketplace. Right, right. Well, I want to second that about the pictures, Julie, because I've noticed that a lot of people, they'll put a stock photo, like maybe it was something they bought off Wayfair. And so they put the picture of the Wayfair and always (laughs) ask, is this, you know, could you send me a picture of the real item? Because I was interested in a couch and well, it looked really great on the stock photo. (laughs) And then they send me this picture probably taken at like seven o'clock at night with the dimmest light possible. And it just did not look anything like that. I can't even barely see the item and I'm not going to drive. It was 45 minutes away. I'm not going to drive 45 minutes for that. You know, you need to have Mm -hmm. good, well-lit pictures of the actual item. Yes. Yeah. Like outside is even better because you get natural light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shows things better. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, do you guys have any other tips that we have not covered for listeners on how to get a good deal or how to sell their things? I think we've covered a lot of them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We will just warn you listeners that Facebook Marketplace is addicting and you will find (laughs) yourself looking for more and more things because it's like the thrill of the hunt. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I'm looking right now. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners, we hope that you've gotten some good tips and tricks, and we would love to hear what good bargains you've gotten or what things you've sold. Feel free to message us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast or email us at Midlife Matters Podcast at gmail.com. But before we go, we want to do I'm a fan. And Cheryl, you're our guest. So what are you a fan of this week? So I am a fan of a beauty product. Um, okay. It's vitamin C serum for your face. Oh, and you it, put it that. on your face every day. Um, it's like a dropper, liquid dropper. You drop it in your hand, rub it together, and then put it on your face. I usually do it once a day. I had a, a facial done back in October, and I hadn't had a facial in years. And she told me to start using vitamin C serum. And it is, oh, wow. it's just brightens your face. I love it. I just love it. It's, it's nice. Yeah. So is it, how does it feel? Is it like tingly? No, I mean, it's cool. It's almost okay. like cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. a cool cloth on your, on your face and then you just leave it on there for a little bit and then you put your moisturizer on top of that. Oh, well, that's really it's neat. so nice. Really yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried that, Julie? I have. I got it from my dermatologist. Did you, did you say where you got it? I'm sorry. No. Um, so I got it from the the lady there that did my um, oh, facial. Okay. So I paid a nice little chunk of money for it. <laughs> it is expensive it is and it's not expensive. very stable. No, like, it's not. Have, yeah. yeah. You have to kind of be careful or you'll spill the whole bottle. But um, but I have seen it like I've seen a, a take a knockoff on Amazon and I've seen some at TJ Maxx. Mm -hmm. I mean, any place that you buy beauty products would probably Mm -hmm. have it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure this one is great, but I probably will buy off of uh, like Amazon next time. (laughs) Or maybe Facebook Marketplace. (laughs) Or maybe Facebook Marketplace (laughs) if it's not used. (laughs) 
All right, Julie, what are you a fan of this week? All right, mine is a kitchen tool, and it's called um, a Danish whisk. You know that I'm a sucker for things on sale on Instagram. Did That's you, where I bought mine. Did you buy this off Instagram again? <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I bought one for a gift. And um, I love wood handled tools. So this is, it has a nice wood handle. And it's not your typical whisk. It's totally shaped different. And it can do things more like stiffer doughs. Like you could make bread with it, mix waffles, pancakes, mix a cake. You could even mix like meatloaf with it and it doesn't get all stuck in there. Oh, so I really like it and I can, I can share it with you the link. So yeah, well, that sounds neat. In a recent episode, you recommended a tool. I think it was your favorite kitchen tool of 2020. And it was like a spray bottle with oil. And I actually had a bottle that I had bought for that purpose, but had just never gotten around to filling it up. So I did last night and it was a great way to spritz my vegetables and things. Yeah, to get a lighter coating. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So new kitchen tools are always very handy. All right. Well, I'm a fan this week of something that I use a couple times a year. It's Mpix. It is a site to get really nice quality prints. So I don't know where you guys go for prints, but I guess maybe the nicest one here in town that I could go to is Costco. And it's not that their prints are bad, but if I've gotten professional pictures done and I print them there, the coloring is not quite how the person edited it. Or maybe it's one way one time I pick it up and then I might get those reprinted three months later and the coloring is a little different. Mpix is like a really high quality place where the way that the photographer edited the pictures is the way that you're going to receive them. Has that ever happened to you that you get something printed and it doesn't quite come out the way you expected according to how it looked on the computer? Yeah, because I think that they actually... Isn't there something that you can hit like they, they um, what's the word? Color correct. Co- correct it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they think something's wrong and then they've corrected it to where it's not yeah. the way you wanted it. Yeah. yeah. And I had some wedding photos of my son's wedding a year before, but I really wanted to give one to my mom and dad for Christmas and I wanted it to be really nice. So I, you know, got those from Mpix for Christmas. And my daughter asks for a gift card from there every Christmas because then she goes and gets a bunch of prints made. Mm -hmm. That's a good gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're redecorating on Facebook Marketplace and then you also (laughs) want to get some prints made, you can utilize (laughs) MPix. We're just going to be changing everything up because, you guys, it's 2021 now and we've been in our houses for almost a whole year (laughs) and we need new things to look at. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Cheryl, do you have any more plans to redecorate this year? Well, I've almost redecorated every little space I can think of. (laughs) I guarantee there'll be something else that pops up in your mind. I know, I know. I think my husband will kill me, though, if I decorate one more thing. (laughs) Well, I'd love to see pictures, Cheryl, if you could maybe put them in stories and tag us. I'd love to see them. And listeners, too. That would be... Yes, inspirational. Yeah. Tag us in a story. Yeah. And yeah, if absolutely. you want to do one of those things where you're like $90 for the chair, a dollar, 150, <laughs> like let us know what they cost. Let us know yeah. the kind of good deals you got. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Cheryl. Well, thanks so much for coming on. And Julie, it was great hearing your stories today, too. And listeners, we hope you'll contact us with things that you've bought on Marketplace, too. It was so great talking with you guys. I can get back to shopping. (laughs) Yes. All right. We'll see you next time. All All right. right. Bye. 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 We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.